for my project, I have chosen what is commonly called the baptism scene from the first Godfather movie. In it, Michael Corleone, the head of the Corleone family, is attending the baptism of his son. At the same time, members of his family are carrying out the murders of the other powerful families in New York, all on his orders. The scene opens with this far establishing shot of a Catholic church. The diegetic organ and baby's cry and ensuing dialogue from the priest show this to be a baptism. We are shown Michael as he looks at his child. These alternating shots of his son and the close-up of his face are evidence of the Kuleshov effect, as his face can be interpreted as solemn or contemplative in relation to his son. <laughs> These shots begin a series of alternating images of different members of Michael's criminal family preparing for something sinister. The opening shot of the man building the gun tells the viewers the nature of their actions. These shots are juxtaposed with shots of Michael in the church contrasting holy images with violent ones, of which Michael is fully aware. Mikael, Acipe sal sapiense propiciase si tibi in vita maternam. Amen. Deus omnipotens pater domino nostri Jesus Christ, we de regenerabere sacque spiritu sancto. We de tebi tibi remission omnia peccatorum, iste te liniat crisma te salutus in eiodum Christo Jesu domino nostri, in vita maternam. Amen. These two characters are some of the hitmen that are to come into play momentarily in the film. The close-up of the shaving cream tells the viewers that he is in a barber shop, and his status is conveyed in his receiving a shave as well as his relaxed attitude in the scene. This also shows the viewers his fairly apathetic view of what he is about to do. Ego te lineolio salutas in Christo Jesu Domino Nostro, rabias vitam eternam, amen. Michael, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? The repeated switching between mobsters and the church is done to highlight the contrast in the two activities. As evident with the policemen in particular, this is an elaborate and well-calculated plan. The amount of thought that went into it serves to further undermine Michael's place in the church, coming to a head in the line of questions the priest asked Michael, beginning with, do you believe in God? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church? I do. Pater nostri qui es in cele santi vicetur nomen tu, arveniat regnum tu, via voluntas tua sicur in cielo er in terra. Banum nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debite nostrum, sicur in nos limitibus, debitoribus nostrus, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos a malo. Amen. Micael, ingredere in templum dei, curabias patrum con Christo in vita maternam. Amen. All hitmen have now 
been fully introduced and the scene is moving towards the finale. The constant motion of the characters is again shown to be compared to the immobility of the people in the church. This can be seen to show that despite his not moving, Michael is fully in control of the situation and his plans are being carried out. Further, the gunmen are replaced by a close-up on the baby, something usually symbolizing life, purity, and innocence. <laughs> As the killers all assume their final positions, the crying baby from the beginning of the scene comes back, almost as a response to the violence to come. The alternating images of killers and targets creates a suspense in the viewers as they know what is going to happen, but it is now a matter of time. Michael Francis Ritzy, do you renounce Satan? I do renounce him. This clear juxtaposition almost directly addresses the difficulty and hypocrisy of the situation at hand. As he is asked if he renounces Satan, the first target is killed. The questions continue, each one paralleled by a death. Each of these killings is carried out precisely and according to a clear plan. As the damage is surveyed with alternating shots, the scene ends with Michael agreeing to be baptized, having just overseen a mass execution. 